Hey everyone, Charlie here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another One Cup of Japan. If you're new to the series, the train's coming behind us here. If you're new to the series, literally just me with one cup of something. Today's just water, showing you for the duration, however long that bottle of water, coffee, or whatever lasts around Japan, wherever I happen to be when I'm shooting. Today, we are here in Sabai City, where I live, and it's cherry blossom season. So, uh, so I thought I would uh, show you guys around. Cherry blossoms, they only last for a week. Unfortunately, the weather isn't great today. It's warm at least. Uh, but we might get rained down, we might not, we'll see, I guess. And yeah, so cherry blossom season. Um, I'm sure many of you know if you've been watching the channel because I've pointed it out God knows enough times, but uh, it marks the beginning for a lot of people, you know. Uh, met a guy yesterday who uh, was interviewing for his first post uh, college job. And a lot of those jobs have already started now, but a lot of people will start here within the next couple weeks uh, doing whatever they're going to be doing. Um, other kids, like I've talked about before, have just started their first year of elementary school. And, yeah. Others are starting college or whatever the case may be. So it's, uh, it's a time of new beginnings here. It's been really, really hectic at work for me because... Uh, we've just been, our student numbers uh, luckily have been going, have been going uh, skyrocketing. We've been having a lot of demo lessons, been meeting a lot of new great little kids, a lot of whom seem to have a genuine interest in English. Um, and so yeah, it's been really busy, but it's also fiscally too, from like a business standpoint, it's really, this is, uh, it's like the, the beginning of a new fiscal year, right, for, for businesses here, so it's been been hectic and for me uh, as a teacher it's been forced me to look inward and in, uh, trying to evaluate what I can be doing differently and be doing better going into this uh, going to this uh, new year so anyway uh, it is a great day but I have to say despite how I imagined it in my head it does not it does not take much away from the beauty of the the cherry blossoms, you can see some plum blossoms mixed in here too. And, yeah. So uh, this isn't the main part of the park. This is, uh, uh, as you can see down here, across there there's a sitting area. Uh, down here's some koi in the pond. All but one are black. And uh, lots of people coming here with their families today. To sort of check out all the blossoms and stuff like that because Again, it only does last for one week. Luckily, we're supposed to be getting some nice weather here within the next couple of days. So I imagine be lots of picnics and Hanami drinking parties and stuff like that soon. But it really is too bad because just before the Hanami, or the Hanami, the Sakura were really in bloom. There's some white koi up here. Just before they really came into bloom, um, the weather was so beautiful and then it changed. It changed to this, a lot more rainy though the past couple days. Uh, today I guess it's just sort of overcast so that's something. But you know you gotta take what you get I guess so. Yeah, it's so beautiful isn't it? So so beautiful and the smell. I'm happy today too because it's the first time in a while I can actually smell anything or taste anything for that matter. So to be able to smell the cherry blossoms and also the, the, the nanohana, the fields of yellow nanohana when I was on the bike ride here, it was a, it was a pleasure, you know. <sighs> Man. And as you can see, not many, but there are already some of the cherry blossom petals that are, that are falling down from the trees. And particularly if it rains, that's, that's the big issue with it being so rainy is that if it rains, Excuse me as I wipe my disgusting nose here. But as it rains, 
it unfortunately ends up hastening the process of uh, of uh, the flowers turning from some flowers. The, the tree has gone from being flowered into into leaves. So anyway, I've talked enough, at least for the moment, about sakura. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about some things that are on my mind. That is, after all, ultimately the point of the show, I guess, right? Talk about things that maybe don't deserve their own video or certainly deserve their own video, but anyhow, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, so this this uh, this video is the first first video of the second week of uh, VEDA, video every day in April, or vlog every day in April. Who gives a shit what the acronym stands for? Point is, you put out a video every day, and the first week was fun. I hope you hope you guys enjoyed watching them. From a creative standpoint, hmm, I thought there were some really good points. Yesterday's video, for example, the video from uh, Uriwari no Taki uh, over in the Wakasa region of Fukui. I thought, yeah, really let me tinker with some editing, tinker around with some sound mixing a bit, and uh, tinker around with, with uh, color correction and stuff like that, which I guess fits under editing. And I'm sorry that I'm wheezing, but still a little bit sick. So it's gonna be a little bit slower than usual video-wise, pace-wise. Look how beautiful they are, my god. So simple. And then, I, I don't even know what kind of tree the, this is coming from, but these are beautiful too. Small little, the blossom itself is green, but then Huh. Beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, Veda has been a really interesting thing, I guess, to to put it in as to say it as quickly as I can. Um, and I'm looking forward to week two here, but I have to say, I don't understand how people do it. Like, if they're trying to make a serious go of YouTube and also have have a job, or if they also have other hobbies that they want to nurture, or for example, if they need to study Japanese because they sort of foolhardily joined a a speech contest that's coming up here in a couple months. Like, how do you how do you find the time to put out seven videos a week, uh, make seven videos a week, and edit them, and then do all the other things you need to do to like engage with people and keep up on your comments and stuff like that? I don't know, but it's an interesting challenge. And the thing about Veda that I'm finding is that uh, I'm glad it's only a month. I, uh, like I say, I'm happy to do it. I was happy the last time I did it, and last time I did it, it only lasted for about two weeks. But um, I'm happy that it's only a month because I like the challenge that it provides, and it forces you to think about maybe uh, maybe to think about making videos in a new way, or maybe to you know, get your mind working on new topics and stuff like that. I'm sorry I'm not walking, but there's people blocking the path over there. I'm waiting for them to go. And, um, so why am I showing you my face? I can show you these beautiful surroundings. Right? And, yeah, think about new topics, think about new ways to edit. Maybe force you to look into new music or things like that. Really, you know, you have to kind of change your way of looking at things. Uh, so, but also, on the flip side, uh, attacked by some kind of creature, on the flip side of that, there's also the issue of like, hmm, making something because you have to, right? And I think to a certain extent there's something, there's a part of that, and that's, that's where we came from, by the way, down there. We walked up this way. <coughs> like, like in writing, right? You should, you should try to write every day. Um, and sometimes, yeah, it feels like a job, but I don't know. I don't know. In writing, I guess, nobody, unless it's like a blog, and people don't see the results every day. So if you put out something subpar, like maybe you you write a chapter and you're in bad mood and you're like, oh, I just gotta, I have to write, I don't wanna write, but I have to write. Maybe that means you get a bad chapter. Maybe it means you get a good chapter, but the point is, like, you can just throw it away, you know? 
can just absolutely throw it away and it's not a big deal but here oh a lot of people up here when it is video every day in April right uh, well you have to put it out so that's been an interesting thing is sort of wondering like okay should I go through with this and put this out or not and yeah it's a matter of integrity people now these over here are of course not the cherry blossoms but <coughs> excuse me dying but I hope hopefully first of all you guys can see the stunning view of the mountains and the way the clouds are just sort of hanging onto them or off of them however you want to look at it and then you can see those those long bands of yellow that's um, Nanohana uh, rape blossom and of course they're they're beautiful to look at and they smell amazing and I want to say mm, just over that way where that where that really really big band of yellow yellow blossoms are a uh, band singular band is <laughs> ahead of us there's a there's a festival today a Nanohana festival but uh, probably not gonna go because if I bike that far and it rains I'm gonna be in some kind of trouble as far as staying warm and all that goes so mm. but ah, it feels so good you know I don't know about you guys but maybe it's just the, the fact that I'm slowly not so slowly becoming a grandpa as somebody pointed out my thinning hair on the last one cup, thank you for pointing out the, the who, how was that put before, the, the monkey's butt on the top of my head. Yes, it's happening, what, what can you do, you know? Eventually I'm just gonna go and like, full on shave it and I'll just be Jason Statham, a less attractive version of him for, for the rest of my life probably. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, to think about the past of time in this way. And I think probably that's going to be the focus of my videos for the next week, is talking about how... Not all of them, but sort of the more talky, introspective, or not introspective, thoughtful videos are going to be about this idea of the, the passing of time and who we are now and, 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 you know, doing what we can do with the time, making hay while the sun shines. Is that the correct way to use that idiom? Never use that. But, um, anyway, so that's one thing that's been on my mind, is sort of like the, the creative struggle. But I've also been wondering about the idea of experience here, you know? And when I say here, I mean, I mean, uh, geographically here, like as in Japan. Because I've been wondering about the experiences people have and the experience that I have and and why maybe they're they're so different um, I was watching a video from another J vlogger the other day who I don't actually their perspective really irks me um, because in general I, I, I very much just like when people are only able to see the negative in things um, and I came to wonder, now that I've been here for this long, like if, if it is really just a matter of wait and see, right? And I should clarify here before I keep going. Ah, and yet I keep losing my, losing my mind as I see these beautiful views. There, there's, a, there's a belief. There's a belief that uh, among among some people who move here uh, on on a permanent basis, uh, that that there's like a honeymoon period here, you know, where sort of you keep the blinders on for the first year, maybe two years that you're here, and then and then it's like suddenly. Not even consciously, just sort of, I don't know, maybe you get fed up with things, maybe you get sick of being treated as this thing, ah, yes it is. Being treated a certain way, whatever the case may be. And, and that's only then, only then do you see this place for what it is. Uh, 
and how it is and how people treat foreigners and you know things like that every everything like that and I I just don't think I feel that way uh, and of course maybe then the point is that well I simply haven't been here long enough to to understand the truth or or take on or, or or see things as they really are or something like that or maybe too maybe in and just more things than just just this just my perspective on this maybe I am you know I'm choosing to look at things with the rose colored uh, through through rose colored glasses but th that also being said like okay this time I've been in Japan for I've lived here for two and a half years. Before that I was here for a year, so that's three and a half years of my life I've spent here in Japan. And if it's not yet the case that I feel like a second class citizen, or I feel that people treat me poorly because of what I look like or my background or something like that, then then when will it be the case, you know? And that's what I should have said first when I began talking about experiences. So I wonder like, okay, well, what about it? What about my, my experience has differed so much? How fast these families here. Oh. oh, that's right. There's a tea house up here where you can go and have the whole tea ceremony thing. Mm. Mm. Okay, so now that I'm past these people and their children, ah oh boy. Ah, again, I've lost my train of thought. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just so incredibly beautiful, isn't it? Ah, um, and as I say, so I, I began to start thinking about experience and why my experience is different. And I wonder, is it, is it a matter of luck? Right? Like, is it just luck that, that maybe people have not treated me in a way? Uh, like, uh, by and large, generally speaking, right? Like, of course I've had some uncomfortable experiences here. Like I had an experience a couple weeks ago when I ran the marathon and a friend of mine uh, and uh, a friend of mine came to the race to cheer me on and after the race we were eating I don't know some kind of post-race food I forget what it was and you know a a guy in a camera, uh, not a guy in a camera, can you imagine? Uh, a guy with a camera, a television camera, which now I'm realizing sort of the irony of this story, I suppose, but... <laughs> anyway, a guy with a camera saw us standing there and was like, Oh, look, we can, we, can, we can work the international angle. Let's go over there and talk to them and blah, blah, blah. So, certain, certainly, uh, they did just that. They came over, they stuck the camera on us, they're like, can you can you just keep on eating and we can get the the you know a shot of you eating and I was like all right man whatever like what right do I have I, I make videos kind of thing and of course my friend got out of the out of the picture and everything like that and um you know and then there afterwards they're like is it delicious and I was like yeah it's delicious you know and which is fine I guess but at the same time it was like okay well I just ran and I'm exhausted and you're not bothering anybody else and I just want to hang out with my friend and, and eat this and enjoy it. And so, all that to say that yeah, you know, um, there are uncomfortable experiences here. But maybe it is just the fact that I have been lucky in the experiences I had. I haven't felt excluded by those experiences or I haven't been constantly reminded that, I, that I'm not Japanese or, you know, that I 
that I look the way I look or whatever, or that I speak weirdly or whatever the case is. Of course, there have been, again, there have been those instances, but, so that's the first thing. I wonder, is it luck, right? And certainly maybe some of it is luck. And then, on the other hand, I wonder if it's geography, right? Uh, Fukui, Sabae, Takefu, this area, right? Hokuriku, in general, I think. Uh, is is different is different to me than any other place I've been in, in Japan. Uh, when I was living near Nagoya for school, yeah, pe people were nice to me and they were helpful when I asked them uh, questions or anything like that. So I, I nothing bad to say about people in Nagoya. And of course, Tomoko lives up there and Victor lives up there and everything. And those people have been nice to me. Uh, but that's sort of outside of what we're talking about, isn't it? Uh, the view of the top of the temple over there, that Buddhist temple through the cherry blossoms, is just amazing. I wish I had a camera that could sort of capture it in the same way that I see it, but I guess we all end up wishing that for, for photos, don't we? Um, but what I mean to say is that is that while people have been, were, were nice to me in Nagoya, here people are incredibly kind and outgoing and they want to talk and I, and I don't just get the, I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I do, I do often hear like, oh, where are you from, why are you here, like blah blah blah, like that kind of bullshit small talk kind of thing. Um, but I've also had a lot of people who are just generally interested in having like, a longer in-depth conversation about a lot of different things, you know, since I've been here. And, you know, then I see, then I see videos from people or I talk with people who are living in Tokyo or Osaka or, or some of the other places. And they've just had the opposite experience and I, I you know, so that's why, that's why I wonder, okay, well, maybe if it's not luck, is it? A matter of konnichiwa. Is it a matter of geography? And not just a matter of geography, but geography. That's not how you pronounce that word. Not just a matter of geography, but you know, the type of people and the uh, type of personalities, right? Stereotypically, at least, that tend to live in those places. And Continuing on from that, thinking a little bit further about it, and I wonder, okay, well, if it's not luck, and it's not geography, is it then, is it then something personal, you know? Is it, is it something that, that I'm doing or I've done or the way I act versus the way maybe somebody else acts in certain situations that then, that then gives me a different experience? And Okay, let's go down here. So I keep pausing guys, but I keep going through groups of people. And uh you know, not knowing not knowing any, any of the background, right? Because people's experiences are their experiences and so it's it's hard to say well you don't want to invalidate anybody's experience but at the same time like if you haven't lived in multiple places right or you haven't been many places or you haven't put yourself in uncomfortable situations or taken yourself out of the bubble right of uh, everyday mundane experience then I wonder how you can how you can judge things in such a blanket way right if we're talking about experience here in Japan and so, uh, that's, I think that's probably why I get so frustrated when, when people make blanket negative videos that say, this is the way things are going to always be no matter where you are in Japan, right? Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, I will certainly admit to feeling protective in some ways of this country. Um, I, I will absolutely agree to it. In the same way that, despite all my 
all my issues with America, uh, with the U.S. Uh, you know, I still feel protective of the U.S. because because of what it is, you know, to me, because of what it is to me in the same way, because of what things here are to me. But also, I think there has to be a lot taken into consideration for how you choose to experience things. And I think people don't often think about it as a choice. Choice of experience, right? And certainly, certainly there are things that happen that you have no control over and that will shape your experience. Like today, for example, right? Like this overcast day certainly is shaping my experience here. Probably there'd be a ton more people here if it was sunnier and a bit nicer. Not that it's not nice today, I think it's great. But, um, but what I mean to say is that it's that choice, right, of being like, okay, well, I can either continue to think of myself as this, as this, you know, poor downtrodden person who's always being shat upon by people because of how I look or because I don't speak a language a certain way or at all or things like that, right? And ultimately, there's so many things that people end up complaining about that are just a matter of a matter of you taking control, right? And I never want to crap on people who who come here or live here and don't speak Japanese or don't know much about the culture because guess what? When I came here, I knew a fair deal about the culture because of my because of my education, uh, because of my university background. But oh, this is kind of interesting. These are all Tsutsuji, by the way, surrounding me. These will be beautiful here next month, a big festival here. But, you know, I barely spoke two words of Japanese, so... Um, but, um, when I say that, I think... I think what people fail to realize, or maybe they do realize it, but they fail to take appropriate responsibility for it, is shaping their responsibility by putting the work in, you know? And I understand how much of that can be said of like, alright, well, what if I'm going to school and I've got a job and all these things? I understand how much of a time commitment it is and how much of your life you need to put into it and how much, maybe, how much nicer it would be if you could just sit down and read or go out for that for that beer for an extra night a month, or an extra night a week with friends or whatever. I understand that completely, but these, the single best thing I ever did for getting out of that experience that people, even people who I know have been here for 10 plus years, who say the same thing about their interactions with Japanese people, that, that it's nothing more than shallow one-off interactions and stuff like that. The single uniting factor of that is people not willing to put in the work to either A, come to understand why things are the way they are culturally and how you can sort of uh, navigate that, right? And that's ultimately a really big important skill is, is cultural navigation. I don't know another way to put it. I'm sure there's probably a better, more technical way to put it, but there's that. But then there's also how can you expect people to move beyond anything shallow when you don't there's the, there's no pathway for them to do so. You know what I mean? It's like it's like coming to the side of a cliff and you figure, well, I really wish I could just go through this cliff, right? That would be easy. It would be the least amount of work. <laughs> this is a really bad analogy. The point is that you are choosing a a lifestyle or a situation for yourself in these cases where you're choosing to go over the mountain when maybe there's there's a tunnel there that you can already go through. You see what I mean? Maybe the tunnel's a little bit out of the way and yet it takes some time or or maybe it's a little bit more dangerous than just taking the mountain trailer or whatever the case may be. This is a terrible analogy, I understand. But um it's just I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And it 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 increasingly frustrates me and if there's if there's anything at this two to three year mark now of this stint that I, that I am becoming sort of jaded to, that I am sort of realizing the truth of, it is that 
so many of us, and I've said this before now that I realize it, are keen to take no responsibility for that sort of recurring situation and are more likely to complain about that situation than put in the time put in the time and the effort to both give people a means by which they can really bond with you and also you know put in your own work right it has to be a two-way street it's not just up to Japanese people to to make a good conversation with you right is, is really the point I'm trying to make and that's something that that I'm really sort of sick of it's just like okay well you know it's hard for me to make friends because I don't speak Japanese and blah, blah blah and I understand that I really do but then if you're asked okay oh well, you know that that happens like it's understandable how long have you been here and then they say three years six years ten years right what what so anyway I think since we're just about finished here and hopefully I've shown you guys enough of these beautiful cherry blossoms around the park that I think that's where we will end. Take the last sip of our cup of here. Now thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers.